What's up everybody, it's Rashad Bowie. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button as I upload video on a weekly basis covering the hottest topics in sports, especially if it is OU related. And this is Ballin' with Bowie. Today, I want to break down a big card in the UFC, UFC, UFC 259. Uh, There's a lot to happen in the three title fights, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, the first fight of the, uh, the night was the... Uh, Tiago Santos versus Alexander Rakic. That was kind of a, a slow, slow fight. Not much happened in that fight. Uh, they both just felt each other out for the majority of the fight. It was quite boring. Probably the worst fight of the night uh, on the main card. That is, you know, um, Alexander Rakic won by unanimous decision, and he said he wants to fight for the title next. I don't think he's good enough to fight for the title next. Uh, if he does fight for the title, I think he's going to get wiped. Because, like I said, this fight was very boring. I thought Santos was going to be able to pull it out. I thought he was going to be able to recover from the past couple losses, but he continues his losing streak. But, yeah, Rocket, he didn't look good. He doesn't look like a title contender, but he thinks he's a title contender, so we'll see what happens with him. In the second fight on the main card, um, Islam gets Drew. Islam dominated the entire fight. They're on the ground for the majority of the fight. Islam just kept getting takedowns and hit him with the ground to pound for the entirety of the fight for a second and third round and Drew just couldn't do anything to stop him and in the third round Islam ended up getting a, a finish by submission who got a uh, arm triangle and that was kinda what what led to that was him dominating on the ground and Drew didn't do anything for the entirety of the fight and Islam um, he's only the um, 14th contender in the lightweight division and I think he needs to be much higher than that because he, he looked like um, a pretty dominant fighter. He looked like he needs to be top seven, six. He it looks like he needs to be fighting a top five guy, honestly, in his next fight. So we'll see if he'll be able to get that uh, coming up. In the first championship fight of the night, which was a historic fight, not in a good way, but it was a historic fight between Peter Young and Alderman Sterling. Um, Sterling was down on the cards going into, uh, I believe it was the fourth round. Uh, two judges had him down, and one judge had him up. And then Peter Jan stupidly ended up kneeing Alderman Sterling while he was on the ground, while he was on a knee, which you clearly can't do. You can't knee someone while they're down on the ground. And someone in Peter Jan's corner, I don't know if it's a miscommunication, but Peter Jan in, in Russian, or Pyotr, that's how you say his name, which I learned uh, during the card. Uh, but Jan... His, he asked his corner if, if he should knee him, and someone in his corner said, just punches, just punches, and then someone else said yes. I don't know if they were saying yes to him, or saying yes to something else, I, I don't know, but Jan ended up kneeing him, which he knew was illegal, and so I don't even know why he needed to ask. He, he clearly couldn't knee him, so I don't know why he asked or why he threw it, but he did, and ended up losing the fight by DQ, which was the first time that Someone has won a title by disqualification, which Alderman Sterling, he didn't want to win that way. I don't think anyone ever wants to win anything when it's just kind of given to you. You didn't earn it. But yeah, Jan loses his, his bantamweight championship due to a DQ, uh, stupidly loses it. And then he didn't seem too concerned about Alderman Sterling after he did that. Like, Sterling was on the ground for a while and he was dazed when he got up. I mean... Could he have been playing it off a little? Maybe. Who knows? Either way, it was illegal. Either way, it was dirty. And either way, he was hurt. And Jan didn't care to check on him whatsoever. And then after the fact, hops on Twitter and talks about how sorry he is and it was an accident, yada, yada, yada. But you didn't check on the man while he was down on the ground. You didn't check on the man post-fight. Like, and so the, the whole tweet, I don't really know if that's real or not. Uh, I think it was a dirty play. And you know the rules. You know not to do it, so... Um, I don't know why you would do it. So we'll, we'll see if Aljamain runs it back with with Jan. He said he does. I mean, I honestly don't want to see Jan for the fight for the title again. I don't think he deserves it after doing something like that. I think he needs to fight someone else and then get a title shot. I don't think he deserves one, even though he was a champ. I mean, that's usually how it goes. If you're the champ and you lose, you you most of the time will get a title fight right after. Uh, but I guess it's up to Aljamain, whatever he wants to do. The next fight of the night was the GOAT, Amanda Nunez, fighting Megan Anderson, which she totally wiped the floor with her. It wasn't even close. Uh, first round finish for Amanda Nunez was in the first two minutes. Ended up getting her in an arm, arm bar, 
but she was piecing her up and on um, when they were on their feet for the first minute I'd say they were on their feet she was piecing her up pretty good uh, Megan had no answer for her on, on the feet or on the ground obviously because she lost after about two minutes but I don't know what Amanda Nunes is gonna do next she says she's not gonna vacate her belts to go anywhere I mean she, she likes being a two-time champ and she's just gonna keep fighting keep racking up her bank account I mean there's no one to challenge her besides the other two champs I, I think the only fight for her honestly is Valentina Shevchenko but is she gonna move up is Shevchenko gonna move down like I don't know who would do what and Amanda Nunes has already beat her twice uh, the, f the second fight, f from what I've seen, had, was a lot closer than the first. The first was unanimous decision. The second was split decision, which is the only uh, fight that Amanda Nunes has had by split decision since she's been the champ. Um, but yeah, we'll see what Amanda Nunes does. I don't think there's anyone in her divisions that can challenge her. I think she's gonna wipe whoever she fights. So, um, and uh, also Shevchenko, she has a she's defending her title in a couple weeks, so she's got to win that before even considering fighting Amanda Nunez, whether it's in her division or in Nunez's division. We'll see what happens with that one. And then the main event of the night was uh, Jan Bluhovic versus Israel Adesanya. Um, I, I thought it was a lot closer fight than the judges had it. I did think Adesanya was going to win. Um, he didn't. He ended up losing by unanimous decision. I thought it was 38-38 going into the fifth and final round. And I thought Jan had won that fifth round to give him the win. I thought it should have should have been a, a 49-37 uh, or 49-39-37 yeah, score. Um, but none of the judges had it that way. The three judges, they had one judge had 49-46 and then two of them had 49-45 because they gave Jan a 10-8. Um, and there's no way that Jan had a 10-8. There, there isn't. I mean... He got a 10-8 because he had ground control uh, for about two and a half minutes in the round. But the first two and a half minutes, I mean, what were you doing? He wasn't doing much to anything. I mean, it's not like he was sticking out of Sonya. Um, so I didn't think he earned a 10-8. And 10-8 means that you absolutely dominated your opponent for the entirety of that round. And out Sonya was not dominated. And when Jan w did have ground control, he wasn't doing anything. He was just holding, holding on to him and holding the position. I mean, he was, he was hitting him a little, but they weren't significant strikes. They weren't doing anything at Adesanya. Um, yeah, I, I disagree strongly with the scorecards. Um, if Adesanya would have got the win, I wouldn't have been too upset about it. If they would have gave uh, the win to Jan on a much closer scorecard, I wouldn't have been upset about it. But to, to say that Jan won... 49-46 or 49-45 with a 10-8? No way in hell. No way. The, the fight was way closer than that, and I don't know what the judges were looking at during during that fight. Um, the next pay-per-view event is for a couple weeks. Um, next Saturday is going to be fight night. Um, can't remember who it is off the top of my head. But yeah, this was a good card. I, I don't think it was this... It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, mainly because of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, mainly because of the DQ, that kind of just ruined it, and then also the judges, I don't think, getting the, the scorecard right. I did think Jan should have won, but not, not in the fashion that he did. But that's all I got for this podcast. Catch y'all later. Deuces.